Hello and welcome to the short overview of computational fluid dynamics or CFD. CFD is essentially a numerical solution of the conservation equations. What is the motivation of doing CFD? We know from transport phenomena modeling that the equation of change for the conserved quantities of momentum, energy and species is given by this set of equations. The first is the Navier-Stokes equation for momentum balance. The second is the energy conservation equation for an ideal gas. And the third is the reaction diffusion equation for a species. Here, capital D by dt denotes the substantial derivative, which is the sum of partial derivative in time and convective transport term given by V dot del. Substituting the expression here, this term becomes V dot del V. V being the independent, V being the dependent variable. The product of V and gradient of V becomes a nonlinear term. All the other terms in this equation are linear in the velocity. Similarly, we can have nonlinear terms in the energy equation. The heat flux Q is given by the Fourier equation Q equal to minus K del T. In many cases, the thermal conductivity is constant, in which case this term is linear. However, if K is a function of temperature, then we will have a term here which is the product of temperature and its gradient, which makes it nonlinear. Apart from that, there could be a coupling between these equations. Where does the coupling come from? The viscosity of an isothermal Newtonian fluid is constant, but the viscosity can be a function of temperature. A change in the local temperature also leads to a change in the local viscosity. Regions of higher temperature may have low viscosity and vice versa. Not only that, the viscosity can be a function of the local gradient in the velocity. This gives a nonlinear term here, as it happens for non Newtonian fluids. Therefore, this entire set of equations are coupled nonlinear partial differential equations. We have learned some analytical solutions to these equations in books on transport phenomena, but such solutions are possible only in simple conditions for simple geometries in one or two dimensions of regular shapes. Apart from the nonlinearity in the temperature, we can also have nonlinearity due to gradient in velocity multiplying the temperature term for the convective or the advective term. Similarly, we can have the temperature influencing the local density, which leads to a buoyancy driven flow or free convection flow. In this case of species equations, we can also have nonlinear kinetics of reactions. Anything other than first order kinetics makes the reaction term nonlinear. In textbooks, we could get only analytical solutions because the geometry was one dimensional or axisymmetric or simple shapes. But if we consider anything other than these simple geometries, we can get simple solutions only in a very limited number of cases. This is where we look to solve these equations by numerical methods. Remember, the flow, the flow comes from the convective term V dot del. This term contains the flow or convective transport of heat and this contains conduction. Similarly, 
this contains the flow and these are the diffusion and reaction terms. When we want to combine flow with all these and solve everything numerically, that method is called computational fluid dynamics. There is flow, so fluid dynamics and computational because the solution is numerical. So, CFT essentially solves this set of coupled nonlinear partial differential equations. The way to solve these equations is to convert the differential equation to algebraic equations. In a numerical methods course, we have learned that differential expressions can be converted to algebraic expressions. A differential expression is converted to algebraic expression at a given location. We will see how this is done in a graphical way. Consider some unknown variable phi. It could be velocity, temperature or concentration. We want to find phi as a function of distance x. If we are able to solve it analytically, then we would have got this green line. Our goal in a numerical method is not necessarily to get this continuous function. But if we identify specific locations here along x, that is at these red or black dots, the black dots are called as vertex nodes. The red dots in between them are called as centroid nodes. If we define these points along x and say that we are ok if we can get an approximate solution only at these locations. If we need more accuracy, we simply increase the number of these points. The process of converting a continuous function into a discrete set of point values is called discretization. This is the main domain from 0 to some length L, which is discretized into a finite number of points. Let the points be called as x1, x2, x3 and so on. These points are also called as mesh or grid points. In CFT terminology, the process of creating these points is called mesh generation or meshing. Once the points are defined, we allocate discrete unknown variables phi to each location. So we have phi1 at location x1, phi2 for x2 and so on. Since the differential equation is valid at every location in the domain, we can discretize the differential operator at every location in terms of the unknown variables phi1, phi2, phi3, etc. As an example, the first derivative can be written in terms of a central difference formula such as this d phi by dx equals phi1 minus phi at minus 1 divided by 2 delta x. Similarly, for higher order derivatives. Since this discretization is done at all n locations, instead of solving one differential equation, we will be solving n algebraic equations. Instead of solving a set of coupled nonlinear partial differential equations, we will be solving several coupled nonlinear algebraic equations. What we have shown here is just a simple overview of the method of converting differential equations into algebraic equations. In CFD, there are several other discretization methods known as finite volume and finite element methods. 
but we will not deal with them here for the sake of simplicity. Instead, we will see the broad workflow of the CFT modeling process. First, let us get to know some types of meshes. This will be helpful in solving some simple problems in open form. We will see some simple examples in two dimensions. There is a corresponding equivalence in three dimension. There are three broad types of meshes or grids. Structured, block structured and unstructured. The structured grid is an extension of the regularly spaced points we saw in one dimension. In two dimensions, we have square elements that span the entire region. In three dimensionals, it will be simple cubes. This is the simplest grid to generate and maintain. However, for irregular shapes, we can lose accuracy near the edges. It is also computationally more expensive to get a given accuracy. This is because suppose smaller regions require a large number of points to capture the steep gradients, the same discretization must be used for the larger regions as well. This is where block structured grids come to be helpful. Here we have different regions known as blocks. In each block we have a structured mesh. This way we can have finer grids in regions of high gradient and coarser mesh in other regions. While block structured grids are computationally efficient, it is not so easy to create them automatically. It might require a sig significant amount of manual intervention. If we have a lot of irregular geometries to handle in an automated way, we can use what is known as an unstructured mesh. As the name implies, there is no regular structure to the shape or location of the elements that form the mesh. In two dimensions, the shapes are usually a triangle. In three dimensions, it is a tetrahedron. Such grids are easy to generate by automated methods. CFT analysis is not a start to the end one way process. It is actually a cycle and an iterative process. Let us say we have a complex fluid system we want to simulate on a computer. First, we have to identify the important physics of the problem, that is, to identify the appropriate transport phenomena. More often than not, we do not know which are the essential physics. That is why we go through this entire process in a cycle. If we are able to validate, we keep improving the physical model. Even in choosing the geometry, one must not start off with the detailed engineering drawing of the actual problem. Instead, we start with a simplified physical model on a simplified geometry. The next step is to write the physical model in terms of mathematical differential equations and associated auxiliary equations such as the temperature dependence of thermal conductivity. Along with these equations that define the physical process inside the domain, we also have to identify appropriate boundary conditions at the edges of the geometry and initial conditions in time. 
The geometry is then converted to a numerical grid using one of the methods discussed earlier. The differential equations are discretized on the numerical grid. We have now converted the differential equations into algebraic equations. We have to choose an appropriate solver. Usually, these are iterative solvers. If the solver iterations converge to within an acceptable tolerance, the solution procedure is stopped. An important aspect of CFD solution is visualization. Unlike simple analytical solutions in 1D or 2D, CFD solutions are usually complex. Special methods of visualization and understanding the solution forms an important part of CFD analysis. As mentioned earlier, the best way to start CFD is to start with simple models and geometries, preferably ones that have analytical solutions. After validating the numerical solutions against known solutions, which may be analytical or previous CFD solutions or experiments, we complete one cycle. We can now include more complexities. We can include more physical phenomena or complex geometries and follow through this entire cycle. Beyond a point, we will not have prior solutions to validate. In that case, the CFT solutions become predictions, which have to be tested with real world experiments. One of the tools used for understanding the solutions and analyzing the effects is known as 3D visualization. We will discuss in a separate video some elements of 3D visualization software. In 3D visualization, we can not only get static patterns but also dynamic animation. In this example, we have the Earth's water surface temperature depicted in colors from red to blue, representing hot to cold regions on the surface. In the second example, we have a section of streak lines showing the development of turbulent downstream from laminar or stationary upstream velocities. From these, we can also calculate several local parameters such as the shear stress on the biker's outer body contour. 3D visualization itself is an advanced research area in fluid dynamics. There is a lot to explore. With that remark, we come to the end of the short overview of CFT analysis. There is much more to explore. Goodbye.